hey guys in this video we will discuss the synopsis or the important aspects regarding unsymmetrical fault analysis okay unsymmetrical fault analysis so we have already seen about symmetrical fault analysis so what is something different in case of unsymmetrical and symmetrical fault analysis so in symmetrical fault means what do you mean by the condition of symmetry means all the currents in three phases will be the same so to do the symmetrical fault analysis what we used to do we used to draw a reactance diagram a reactance single line diagram based on reactances for example in one of the problem that we have done we used to do like this isn't it we had a generator and a transformer connected to a bus and if some fault occurs at this point we would have directly calculated what is the voltage and what is the total impedance or reactance vth by xth will give me the current fault current per unit isn't it in this way simply we would have done now this is a single line diagram single line diagram you know the conditions for a single line diagram basically any three phase system can be drawn using a single line but the provided conditions are it is a balanced system because the currents in three of the phases are the same i can replace the three phases with a single phase jo bhi value aayega mujhe into three kar diya to i will get the three phase value isn't it so that was the one of the flexibility we had in unsymmetric in symmetrical faults in symmetrical fault due to the condition of symmetry we would have constructed the reactance diagram using single line diagram and easily we would have done the circuit analysis just uh, ohms law apply karke that is v by r or v by z we would have done the calculations of finding out the fault current or fault mva so on and so forth but now you see in symmetrical fault this condition got disturbed why is it like that what are the types of symmetrical faults as we told lg fault ll fault and ll lg fault llg fault in this what happened you see fault current will be flowing one or two phases the other phase will not have the fault current that means the symmetry is the symmetry has been disturbed our easiness of doing the analysis has been disturbed now you this per unit reactance or this single line diagram is no more valid while doing an unsymmetrical fault means what we have to do we have to take three reactance diagrams for each phase for r phase one reactance diagram y phase one reactance diagram and b phase one reactance diagram and calculate all the fault currents and all and finally sum up them now this is going to become a very tedious and a long process until 1900s before 1900s unsymmetrical fault used to be done phase wise r phase one fault analysis b phase one fault analysis and c phase one fault analysis and studying of unsymmetrical fault is also very much important as i told you the majority of the most frequently occurring faults are of unsymmetrical fault only only symmetrical fault occurs rarely so it occurs rarely and analysis of that rare fault is very easy as compared to most frequent fault therefore it is very much important to study this most occurring fault in an easier way so because there is this kind of difficulty there was a scientist called fortescue so that fellow fortescue has given a theorem okay in the year 1918 in 1918 fortescue has published in ieee okay fortescue has published one theorem called as fortescue theorem so in this theorem what he said that if there is any unbalanced system or unsymmetrical system suppose let us say there is an unsymmetrical or unbalanced system unsymmetrical or unbalanced both are the same if there is an unbalanced system and this unbalanced system is of n phase okay it is an n phase unbalanced system okay this unbalanced system can be split okay it can be split into two components or i can say in two types this can be split into two types that is this n phase system will have n minus 1 number of symmetrical or balanced components plus one zero sequence component that means if there is any n phase unbalanced system this system can be written as a components or sum of components it will have these components it's what are those these components n minus 1 symmetrical or balanced components and one zero sequence component will be there it seems now ours is which phase system our a three phase system is. so if there is any three phase unbalanced system this can be written in the form of n minus 1 balanced components or n minus 1 balanced n phase components this is also three phase but there will be two such kind of things so one is called as positive sequence other one is called negative sequence 
and positive sequence is of how many phase that is also of three phase negative sequence also of three phase but the orientation will be different and this positive sequence and negative sequence are balanced or unbalanced they are balanced only so you will have one positive sequence you will have one negative sequence apart from that you will also have one zero sequence that is what the meaning of Fortescue theorem is now let us see what are those components now this is an unbalanced three phase system unbalanced three phase system means what I told you already the magnitudes of voltage or currents in all the phases are not equal and they are not displaced by exactly 120 degrees this is the balance condition isn't it now you see here VA, VB, VC are the three balanced uh, unbalanced system three phase voltages they are unequal and the displacement is also not exactly in 120 degrees now I can split this fellow into three components itself so okay now I am having one unbalanced system now I will split this into three balanced systems okay what are the three balanced systems are one is positive sequence component what is the positive sequence component will be like now this is this will be like this VA VB VC okay positive sequence component now you see it is having VA, VB, VC, three phase, okay, VA1, VB1, VC1, okay, VC1. Now, VA1 represents, it is a voltage of positive sequence. Now, you see how this positive sequence is, it is balanced because magnitude of each phase component is same and each phase is displaced by 120 degrees exactly and what is the phase sequence? Positive phase sequence, see, always vectors rotate in anti-clockwise direction suppose you are an observer standing over here when these vectors are rotating in anti-clockwise direction what is the order of voltages you will see you will first see VA1 VB1 VC1 isn't it when they are rotating like this so this is called as positive sequence set of phasors and another phasor will be negative sequence as I told and it will also be balanced see let me draw the negative phase sequence voila so VA2 vc2 and vb2 now you see this is negative phase sequence as an observer now the vectors rotates in this direction you stand here and you look va vc and vb and this is negative phase sequence isn't it now negative phase sequence positive or negative phase sequence both are three phase balanced only but their sequence of rotation is different that is the reason why they are called as positive sequence and negative sequence so this is negative sequence set of phasors and this is positive sequence set of phasors and apart from these two there will be another zero sequence phase of phasors set of phasors so zero sequence means the angle between the three phasors will be zero degrees there is, that means they are co co phasors so this is called as va0 vb0 and vc0 so this is how the three okay the three balanced system can be represented as so what I'm going to tell is finally there is an unbalanced three phase system this can be resolved into three balanced systems okay one is positive sequence network which is balanced negative sequence network which is balanced and uh, a zero sequence network this is also I can say a kind of a balance only okay so anyhow I can resolve uh, I, uh, so basically this is not balanced or unbalanced is not applicable for zero but these two three phase systems are balanced and other one is a zero sequence component okay so this is how you can split one unbalanced system into these three components next thing is we will write them mathematically so before writing these sequence components in mathematical form I am going to introduce an operator to you what is that operator means that is an alpha it is called as alpha it is a complex operator basically what is the complex operator we regularly come across we use for example when you write a complex number a plus ib or a plus jb isn't it i or j is a complex operator i and j both are the same there is nothing different i is generally used in mathematics j is used in electrical engineering that's the meaning is the same what does when you are putting i before any number what does it mean yes it is a complex number but what is the significance of i i or j j says that that vector will be rotated by 90 degrees in anti-clockwise direction so j is equal to 1 at an one at an angle 90 degrees that means a b jo vector hai, it will be uh, it will be rotated by 90 degrees so whenever you multiply some value with j it will rotate in anti-clockwise by 90 degrees that is the logic of having j for example i am telling 5j that means ye jo 5 ka value hai, that will be 90 degrees from the reference 
that is what j means so similarly like j only i am going to have another operator which is called as alpha the purpose of alpha is to rotate that particular vector by 120 degrees so alpha is 1 at an angle 120 degrees okay please keep this in mind this might be asked in many ssc je exam or or je level exams and uh, uh, state level psus okay and like we i was telling j or i is equal to how much one at an angle 90 degrees okay you can make this one also in your notes suppose there is some operator minus j or minus i minus j or minus i this means that one at an angle minus 90 degrees in clockwise direction okay like this like we had minus i or minus j we can also write minus alpha now what would minus alpha would be equal to 1 at an angle minus 120 no it is not 120 in the case of alpha it is 1 at an angle minus 60 that is the speciality of this vectors okay that means always any operator has a range of 180 degrees for example let us say this is 0 degrees if plus j that means if plus j can rotate a vector by 90 degrees by 90 degrees that rotated now then minus j must rotate backwards up to 180 degrees full range that means what is the 180 degrees from here 90 degrees so if plus j is 90 degrees minus j would be minus 90 degrees overall the angle between plus and minus operator will be 180 degrees now i was telling you plus alpha would rotate by 120 degrees isn't it plus alpha would rotate by 120 degrees 120 degrees means like this 120 degrees isn't it this is 120 degrees plus alpha then what should minus alpha should rotate by exactly 180 degrees means this much only now what is exactly 180 degrees means minus alpha should be equal to minus 60 degrees rotation only now like this so if you want you can introduce any uh, uh, any operator like this complex operator on your name also and you say that that plus say let us i am nikhil n I'm telling plus n is a complex operator and it will rotate my vector through 100 degrees. Suppose if I'm telling minus n is also minus n is a complex operator and that will be equal to how much? 1 at an angle how much? Minus 80. Understood? In this way we have to create vector operators. Anyhow, this is a complex operator you have understood. And uh, there are some rules regarding this complex operators. That is alpha means 1 at an angle 120 degrees alpha square means 1 at an angle 120 degrees i mean 240 degrees 120 into 2 240 degrees or i can say 1 at an angle minus 120 degrees in this way okay always 1 plus alpha plus alpha square if you take the values and do the sum it will be always equals to 0 this is another important property very very important property 1 plus alpha plus alpha square is equal to 0 this is another thing now utilizing the idea of alpha we will write the mathematical form of symmetrical components of unbalanced system now the unbalanced system is va vb vc isn't it unbalanced system is va vb vc okay now va can be written as sum of va0 plus va1 plus vb1 isn't it vb can be written as vb0 plus vb1 okay plus vb2 this sorry this is va2 this is vc0 plus vc1 plus vc2 okay let me draw the zero sequence component how they look like so zero sequence component means va0 vb0 and vc0 and all our cofacers and the magnitude of all of them will be same that is what i meant by balance so va0 is equal to vb0 is equal to vc0 isn't it so i can rewrite this equation in this way mathematically that is va0 will be see, vb0 vc0 i am replacing with va0 because i want to write everything in terms of one phase only by taking a phase as my reference okay now let's look at the positive sequence network in positive sequence network this is va1 this is vb1 and vc1 now you see va1 is at reference 
then what vc1 is vc1 is alpha degrees okay alpha away from it is alpha away from va1 isn't it vc1 is at 120 degrees away from va1 so i can write vc1 as va1 at an or i can say vc1 will be equal to alpha times of va1 isn't it and where is vb1 240 degrees away from va1 so vb1 can be written as va1 or sorry alpha square into va1 is, is it possible yes so i will just replace everything in this way so va1 is va1 only because it is reference vb1 is alpha square times of va1 and v, vc1 is alpha times of va1 plus again let's look at negative sequence network negative sequence network will have va1 vb1 vc1 now you see sorry vb2 va2 vc2 vb2 is alpha from va2 so va2 time i mean alpha into va2 and vc2 is 240 degrees from va2 so alpha square va2 so this can be written as va2 as it is and this is alpha times of va2 and this is alpha square va2 so like this we have written mathematically means we have resolved these three unbalanced phasors in the sum of a set of these symmetrical components or balanced components okay so i will directly write these in the form of a matrix if i want to write them in the form of matrix how would it look like it will look like this that is v a v b v c this three set is equal to 1 1 1 1 alpha square alpha 1 alpha alpha square multiplied by v a naught v a 1 v a 2 okay so this is the unbalanced set and this is the complex operator set and this is the component sequence components okay so i will write this another way that is v a b c is equal to alpha into v 0 1 2 suppose i want to find out the sequence components from the unbalanced phasors then what would this be equal to this would be equal to alpha inverse v a b c isn't it isn't it yes so if i take inverse of this alpha alpha matrix then i would get these values what are those values equal to i want to find out v0 okay va0 va1 and va2 would be equal to 1 by 3 1 1 1 1 alpha alpha square 1 alpha square alpha va vb vc it is a common trend that many students go confusing here only where alpha where alpha square because they look both the same way to take 1 by 3 so the best way of understanding this is you just you could pause the video i will i will draw the other one also i will write the other one also you look them side by side or at once you will understand your mind will map it so let me write the other one also the other one will be va vb vc this will be equal to in the in the top it is 1 1 1 only but it is alpha square alpha 1 alpha alpha square this is VA1, VA0, VA1, VA2. Just uh, look at this. Okay. So, try to remember in this way.